Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Karua Cafe Racer. This board features good old-fashioned traditional camber. If you don't know how that rides, well, you're either gonna learn or you're gonna die, but basically it's gonna give you a lot of power, snap, and drive out of this board. This board is available in 144, 156, 159, and 164. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a sunny bluebird day with warmer temps, zero wind. There was chunder snow, lumpy snow, perfect corduroy, little bit of frozen stuff in the shade, and for good measure, I found some powder pockets to slash with it. And I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. Clearly this board has a carving free ride directional flex. So you have this softer nose that stiffens up right where the camber section starts and then it just stays consistent back through to the tail where it gets a little bit stiffer there's a little bit of torsional flex nothing crazy to it now when it comes to stability the shape the camber profile the core profiling all of that works in conjunction to make this board stable sure this tip with how long it is does get some flap but then it starts to dissipate right where the camber begins and you feel only a tiny bit of it under the front foot. Everything else, super stable, especially on edge. The only time you really feel anything is when you just jar yourself like you drop down or you just plow into something that's completely frozen and the board just whoops up and then slaps down again. That's the only time that you feel those vibrations. Otherwise, it's a very damp, stable ride that still retains its liveliness due to the camber. This board has a ton of snap, and that's due to the amount of camber that's actually in it. This is one of those boards that whether you want to load it or not, it's going to pop. So when you do load it, you boost to the moon. So when you're riding along, you just sort of roll back on the tail. You're still going to springboard whether you want to or not. This board wants to get back into its original shape when it's weighted. It just has a lot of power to it. You'll notice that right away. So ollieing off rollers, side hits, cat track gaps, not a problem in the slightest. Because someone will ask me, did I butter it? Yes, I did. I did tail wheelies. I went as fast as I could and just got up on it. That's about all you can do. I'm sure you could butter the nose if you really wanted to. Why would you do that on this board? I have no idea. Someone will do it on this board. That person is not me. Here's the thing when you carve with this board. It's got a slow turn initiation. It feels slightly delayed. You notice that as you roll in, it takes a little bit more effort. Now, when you start to disengage that front foot outside that insert pack and steer it more from the middle through the back, that's when this thing comes alive. This is a board that, while it is slow on that roll in and out, it changes the dynamic when you steer it from inside that front foot back. That's where all the power is in this board. And you can sit on that back foot, whether you're on your toe or your heel, it locks in and it stays locked in. This is a board that's just designed to be a soft boot carver. Now, the one thing you'll notice is that when you are carving, you're gonna use more exaggerated hip movements. You're gonna throw your body a little bit more into that turn. And that extra effort pays off with that power that you get out of this board. You're gonna notice when you're on edge, you throw that front hip in and then disengage and sit in the middle to the back of this board, that it's going to turn the way you want it to. This is a board for just being on top of it, driving hard and ripping turns. Short, tight, quick carves, long, hard, drawn out carves, Euro carves, medium carves. It doesn't really matter. It wants to be on edge and it wants you throwing your weight through your hip and then your knees and ankles into it. You do less ankle steering and more of your mid body steering where you're throwing it in and really just driving down into the board to get it to lock in and push it through those turns. So who's this board for? The resort rider that is carving and cruising. This is a soft boot resort carver. This board is very precise. Now it's not as aggressive as I thought it would be for a full camber board, but it is precise. 
And yes, you do get that slower turn initiation, but it changes the whole dynamic of how you actually drive this board. This is a deck for days that you want to go turn and you want to throw your weight into something. This is a board that isn't going to be for everyone, and I get that. That's fine. For me, I bought it. I ride it. It's fine. It's a carver. I'm having a field day with the damn thing. I can throw my weight into it. It changes the dynamic. You're doing less ankle steering and more hip and knee motions into it. That's not going to be for everyone. If you're faint of heart when it comes to riding camber and carving, this isn't going to be the board for you. It's probably going to be too much. But if you're one of those guys that wants to just lay trenches, go fast, haul ass, and put your weight into the board, yes, then you will definitely like this. Overall, very pleasantly surprised with this thing. I do like it. The only thing that's really weird is it's not a full wrap edge. You've got this little section back here on the tail that it comes back and then it stops and then you got like this tail guard in there. They warn you that if you're going switch and you impact something, it could possibly delamp. What I did is I took a file and just filed a bevel on my base right there. I just, you know, went back and forth until it was kind of angled a little bit. So that way, if I run into something, it'll kind of do a glancing blow. I get it. You're not really going to be riding switch with this thing. And if you're thinking you're going to go ride pow with it, which I did ride some pow, but it was just like I found a pow pocket and made some turns. Yeah, this, this, this isn't really a pow board. This is a carving board, 100%. Comparable boards, the Battalion Carver. Binding recommendations, the Rome Katana, the Now Drive, the Burton Cartel X. This has been my review of the Karua Cafe Racer. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Help support us and help us grow out what we're doing over here. I could tell you more, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Mm -hmm.